This week's lit terms include idiom, symbolism, and motif. Idioms are terms or phrases that require cultural context to understand. They're expressions that don't make sense if applied literally, and therefore they don't make much sense to non-native speakers of a language. Because of this confusion, these are generally considered non-standard applications, but can still be used very effectively if the audience for whom the message is intended consists exclusively of those from a culture to whom the idiom applies. For example, the term kick the bucket is recognized by the vast majority of native English speakers to refer to death. However, if a man born in France who speaks English as a second language hears that someone kicked the bucket, he's more likely to interpret that as one's foot literally striking a pail. Without the cultural background, he is less likely to understand what the native speakers are referring to when using such a phrase in English. English is not the only language with idioms, which can make going from one language to another language confusing. That's one of the reasons that it's very important to consider the type of audience you're referring to when you're using things like idioms in speeches or essays. Symbolism occurs when things in writing or elsewhere represent concepts greater than themselves. Basic symbols include things that are commonly associated with what they represent, such as flags or logos. It's known that the bald eagle is a symbol of freedom in the United States, that the cross represents Christianity, and that certain signs indicate information to viewers without relying on words. Symbolism in literature can be more subtle than a visual representation. It's up to the reader to consider what the author may be including for what reasons. If a character is described frequently as wearing a certain color or carrying a certain item, there's a strong chance that it's done on purpose to represent something greater. If a symbol is found throughout a story, film, or series repeatedly, it's technically considered a motif. Motifs could be objects, colors, phrases, or almost anything else that is noticeably recurring in a work of art and appears to symbolize something.